Welcome to this video about using Entity Framework Core in Blazor Server. It matters in which uh, hosting model we are building this application. Because we are using Blazor Server, we don't need to build a controller uh, or an API uh, and make requests to update uh, the database. Because everything uh, runs on the server, we can uh, directly inject the, the database context into the components. So firstly, I have to add three packages. First, the, let's say the base package, Entity Framework Core. The second package we need is the tools. This allows us to add a migration and update the database over the package manager console. And the last one is uh, SQL Server because I'm using SQL Server as uh, the database. Now I have to define our entity. The entity is the class that, uh, that gets mapped by Entity Framework Core to the database. I call it page visit. So we are building an application which uh, tracks the visited uh, components. The primary key is of type GUID. I call it page visit ID, so the entity framework core automatically uh, treats this as, a, as the, the primary key. Uh, daytime, time of visit, and also type string is the name of page. Now I have to build the page visit context. This class has two. Mm. This class has to inherit from DB context, and the database context context is uh, the class that defines the the interaction, let's say, with the database. So DB set page visit. I'm going to call it page visits. The DB set uh, basically takes the page visit and builds a table out of them. Now here I have to configure the constructor in a way so that we can later use um, that we can later register the the page visit context in the dependency injection. Right. So let's go to the startup. As I said, I had to configure it so that we can call at DB context, give you the type of the context, page visit context. Now we have to configure it. Configuring meaning giving it uh, the connection string to the database. I have it, uh, I don't know it by heart, I have it uh, here, so I just copy that in. Ah, oh, where is it? So, database, Blazo, server, EF core. Okay, so now, because I want to track the visited components, I have first uh, to inject the, the page visit context. Now, whenever this uh, component gets loaded, I want to uh, to inject uh, to insert a new entity. Now you may ask, like, which uh, lifecycle method am I going to override? I am going to override this one here on after on after render async. Uh, there's one reason for that, because as a parameter, we are receiving, or, or as an argument, we are re receiving a Boolean that is indicated if the component is uh, rendered the first time. And we need that because Blazor has different render modes, and one of them is server pre-rendered, which is the default. 
and when you are using that, every component actually gets rendered twice. So we would uh, insert everything twice, which is not wanted. Now I have to go to the DB set page visits, add new page visit, object initializer. So the time or time of visit, date time now, the page name of page equals index, and the ID is getting set uh, for us. So now I also have to call save changes async so that the changes are getting persisted to the database. Now this code I can just Go ahead and copy that to the other components too. Just going to change it to fetch data. The counter is receiving also this method. Now I also have to use the inject directive here, page visit context. And how did I call it? Page with a context. So now I also want to create a component which uh, in which our uh, entities are getting displayed. So therefore, I'm creating a new component. I call it just page visits. Now, because the usage of this component uh, is very equal to the fetch data component, I'm just going to copy its markup. Uh, let's just copy everything and then I can delete the unwanted things. So where is our uh, page visit component? Okay, here it is. So I don't need that. I don't need that. It should be accessible over page visits. Now I don't need that too. Uh, let's just delete these two. If we go to the page visits component, we don't need to to be uh, to store this visit also. So now initialized async. I create a list of page visit, I call it the uh, page visits. This list has to be initialized in the constructor. Await page visit context to list uh, page visits and now to list async or to list. Okay, there is no asynchronous one. I think there would be an asynchronous one but uh, I don't have the namespace imported for that, so you just leave it as such. Um, so now here, page visits. No visits yet. Here I'm going to change the table. First one would be the ID. Second one would be the time. Third one would be the name of visited page. Now I'm also going to extend this a bit because I want to not only uh, create and, and read all the entries, I also want to give an option to update and delete them. So here I'm going to say update and then I'm calling, uh, going to create another column in which we can uh, delete them. Here I'm going to, for each over all of them, uh, page visit, okay. page visit ID,
Now here we had uh, time, so I think the date was it. Oh no, it was time of visit. And here the name of page. So now I also want to create uh, the option to delete it. So therefore I have to give it a button here. This will the button to, uh, to update it. So button, button, uh, let's just say secondary, update. Here I'm going to create a button too. This time in the color red, because we want to indicate that something is getting deleted. Danger, delete. So let's add the migration. The migration is basically the script that has to be run when we want to create a database or update the database with all the information. Now we update the database. So the thing that I said is not 100% clear. Uh, the, the model snapshot is, is the file with all the information, but the, the migrations just add up to the, to the model snapshot. So now the database should be ready. So uh, let's start the application. It won't 100% it won't work now. We will only be able to create the entities. Okay, so it loaded, going to click some components now. Oh, okay, the page visits is not in the, in the menu. Okay, so we see we have four entries here. Everything is okay. Now, if I want to update it, there are of course different options. I could create a model and such, but it's a bit, yeah, it's a bit over the top. So I want to display this name in an input field so that we can just create it uh, on the go. And I also have to uh, add a, an F link here. So first I have to, to add an F link here. Page visits, change the link. Oh, I have a a lot of things open. I'm just going to change that to info so that green, I think green is a bit of a nicer color for that. So the name of the page, that's the that's the thing we want to, to change. Input type of text, clause, form, control. And now I just bind this to the name of the page. And I also change it so that every time we change it, uh, it gets uh, assigned a new value. Okay, let's just look how it uh, looks now. Now, of course, we also have to implement the functionality for, uh... okay, so I can change it now, but of course it, it doesn't uh, do a thing here. Uh, now I, we have to give uh, the functionality to do to these two buttons. So how can we do that? Because we retrieve every entity over the context here, we can just say, we have to mark it as async. Now I have to make a statement lambda because we are going to use uh, two lines of code. Await page visit context, save changes async. And then I'm going to call status changed so that we immediately see uh, the things that we have changed. Now for the delete method, I am going to create it here because otherwise it would be a bit too much in, in the event handler, call it delete. It takes a page visit as an input. Now, again, going to call page visit context, remove the visit. 
Now, if you just would leave it at that, nothing would happen because the only thing that this two does, it's uh, it's marking the uh, end pre the entity as uh, to delete. So we have to delete it, and we do that by again calling save changes async. Uh, I think that's already it. So let's give it a go. Okay, so delete, let's just delete the index one. Okay, because when we call delete, we don't call status changed again. So I have to refresh it. Okay, it doesn't work. Okay. Uh, why? Oh, yes, of course, because I'm not calling the method. So delete, I have to pass it. Uh, current page visit and as I've said we are not going to update it so I have to call it status changed here and here I have to await it I don't have to but uh, it makes a bit more sense so now I call this one call it update so Go back to fetch data. Here we see it is updated. Now let's say I'm happy with this update, but here I just I I update it in such a bad way that I want the whole entry to be deleted. So delete. Okay. Uh, okay, so it got deleted, but it didn't refresh immediately. Uh, why is that? Is there an error? No. Okay, uh, because we are calling status changed here, we have to call it uh, after we save the changes, so that, that's because of the reason that I, I gave to you earlier. So let's have one last look. I know it's a bit of a long video, delete. Ah, still doesn't work. Update is working, can make a refresh, it is updated. Delete doesn't work now. If I refresh it, it is updated. Yes, okay, I see where the where the, 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 the error lies. I think I'm going to explain that. Okay, let's I just explain it in this video. The thing is, I first Okay, so I just have to call it here uh, initialized async here manually. Uh, I, maybe it has to do with, with the cache because we are using, uh, yeah, I just, I just make a stat and then we will look. But anyways, I will make a second video uh, about this topic because, okay, it works now. Let's check if it's also persisted. Okay, it's persisted too. Let's recheck the thing with the update. It is updated. Okay, and it's also persisted. So, uh, anyways, I will make a second video about this because we are injecting a DB context and it is from the uh, lifetime of scope. So every request gets one. But the thing is, the request in Blazor server uh, is not really a request because it's over the whole uh, WebSocket uh, connection. Uh, it persists and this uh, makes a bit of problems. And in the next video, uh, which is the continuation to this video, I will uh, show you uh, where the problems uh, are and uh, how we can, uh, uh, yeah, how we can uh, uh, ignore them or how we can make it uh, better. So uh, thank you very much for your attention. Uh,